it all to the table. So you're going to turn an AC up and down. Maybe it's because your faith is being tested. And you're doubting. You're doubting yourself. You're doubting the situation that you're going through. Or you're, or you're doubting the circumstance that you're in. Or maybe you're just overwhelmed. You just feel overwhelmed by everyday life or everyday situations. It's like, you just can't, you can't carry it anymore. You're, just, you're overwhelmed. You're exhausted. And you just feel like you can't hear God. I've gone through that, I've gone through that, I, I, I go through that where, where it's like I'm so overwhelmed or I'm just, my mind is somewhere else, I don't hear, I don't hear his voice. And I feel like it makes it worse. I'm going to tell you that all these are normal things that we deal with as Christians. Fear, doubt, uncertainty. Because our faith is built on the things that we can't see. See, having faith is, 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 is having faith is something that we can't see. We know that we read the word of God. We know that Jesus died on the cross for us. We know that he, 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 he was put to lay in the tomb and he rose on the third day. We didn't see it, but we have faith and we trust it. See, and we, but the thing is, we live in a world right now where it's like only seeing is believing. But if we're real with ourselves, even those times where we do see it, we still second guess. Was that, did I really see that? Did that really happen? And we've seen it with our own eyes. We're living our lives in a roller coaster. Our emotions do this, our emotions do that. We're, we're on the hilltop one day, we're in the valley the next. We're full of joy one day, and then we're just, we feel like we're getting rock on the next. That's being Christian to living in this world that we live in right now. We're just doing this like growing up. You see one of those charts, right? The graph charts that just go up and down. That's what our lives look like. Nothing's changed. I mean, the emotions that we feel, the fear, the doubt, the uncertainty, all that. Guess what? If you go through the Bible, we go through all the stories in the Bible. There are so many people in the Bible that dealt with the same kind of things. The uncertainty the doubt, uh, the worry, the fear, um, being overwhelmed, um, trusting in things that they can't see. See, and one of the stories that, that, that jumped out to me was I was going through the book of Matthew, and if you turn with me to Matthew uh, uh, chapter 14, we're going we're gonna to go from verses 22 to 33. We all know this story. This, this happened after Jesus fed the 5,000 with the five loaves of bread and the two, and the two fish. You know, the, the disciples 
saw what he did, saw the disciples saw with their own eyes that he was able to feed 5,000 and more, and it says 5,000 men, including women and children. That doesn't include women and children. They've they seen this. They've seen it with their own eyes. See, and then Jesus sent them onto the boat and told them to go on their way, and he went away and he, he went to pray. But in the middle of the night, as we get into the story, it will it'll explain more. It will tell us, like, in Matthew 14 through 22, we'll start at 22, it says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him on the other side. While, while he dismissed the crowd. So, so he already told fed the 5,000. He, he, he dismissed the crowd. He told the, the disciples, go ahead and get on the boat and go to the other side. You ever wonder what they were thinking? Like, well, if we go on the other side, then we need you here. How are you going to get over there? <laughs> you know, how are you going to get to us if we go on the boat and we go to the other side and we leave you here? Probably, they are probably thinking that, right? They were probably wondering that. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already considered a distance off the land. But buff, buffed by the waves because of the wind against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out, went out to them walking on the lake. When the, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Remember terrified. Remember that emotion, terrified. It's a ghost, they said. And they cried out in fear. Remember that word fear, terrified fear, another emotion. We deal with, we're terrified of situations, and we walk around in fear when we just don't understand. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said, then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Remember that one, afraid. There it is again. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Remember that word, doubt. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So many of us are just like Peter. And we don't even realize it. We've seen what God has done in our lives. We've seen what God has done in the lives of people around us. We've seen God move in a mighty way. I mean, Man, I, I mean, since I came back and started serving the Lord, and I've seen God move in such a way that, I mean, my brothers are all saved. Amen. Did you know? I had a brother who was a pastor. I had another brother who was baptized. My wife has been saved. My wife has been baptized. You know, I, I mean, I just see God moving in my family, and I know he's not done yet. So, I, 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 I've seen what God does. Just like Peter and disciples, they see and they got to experience the miracles that Jesus was doing. They see it with their own eyes. I mean, we could, we could, we could say, you know, I see him and, and my faith is strong. And so many of us do that. We, we, we go to church and we come to the altar and, and, and our, we leave our prayer room and, and we just experience God. That moment we just experience it. It's like when we get up from the altar or when we leave our prayer room or wherever it is we spend time with the Lord, we're just like, damn, I'm ready to go 12 rounds with the devil. Right? He ain't, he, he ain't, he ain't gonna get none of me either. <laughs> Doing all that. My, my, my grandson is funny because he sits there and goes, come on, knock, knock. Got to go punch. And that's how we feel when we leave our prayer room, when we get off the altar, we feel like nothing's gonna hurt. See that shirt? See that shirt? I gotta look at that out. 
got to live that out. There's so many of us, we wear those shirts that say, you know, uh, I can do all, all things in Christ who gives me strength. You know, or, you know, all these stickers or whatever, and, you know, do we believe them? See, because we want to go 12 rounds with the devil, but as soon as we walk out that door, guess what? The wind picks up. Clouds start to get dark, and we no longer want to go 12 rounds with the devil. We don't want this We don't want it. And all of a sudden, we're just we're beat up. It tells us we're going to go back to a verse that says, "But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out and was saved." See, Peter got the courage to say. If it is really you, tell me to come to you on the water. He's seen everything he's just doing. He had that courage. He, was, he had the courage to get out of the boat. It's like when we get up off the altar, we got that courage to face whatever the world's going to throw at us. But then guess what? It says, when he saw the wind, when he saw the wind, that means he took his eyes off Jesus. He was no longer focused on Christ. He was focused on everything else going on, the, the leaves or, or whatever, the waves that were blowing. And he started looking at everything and the situation and the circumstances that he was in. And, and guess what? Fear set in. And he began to <coughs> sink. He went like this again. Remember I said the, our emotions take a walk and jump? He felt courageous to get out of the boat. He felt good. He was up here. But the moment that he took his eyes off Christ, guess what? He went from here to here because he was afraid and fear set him. He was on that roller coaster of emotions. And I told you to remember those words. First, First feeling he was, he, was being, he, was, he felt terrified. The disciples felt terrified. Peter felt terrified. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, it says they were terrified. Jesus was right in front of them. What was there to be what, what was the reason for them to be terrified? How often are we called to do something for the kingdom of God, yet we don't do it because we are terrified? We're terrified that we're going to fail. How many times have we walked by someone and the Holy Spirit has told us, pray for that person? But you were terrified because you didn't, really, you didn't know how they were going to respond to you. How many times has God said, walk through that door. If you can't see what's on the other side of that door, so you don't know what to expect, guess what? You don't walk through that door because you're afraid of what might be on the other side of that door. See, in Deuteronomy 31, 6, he tells us, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, it, he is that we're not going to read that one. <laughs> I tried to get smart with you guys, but that's why I stay away from the King James Version. Deuteronomy 31 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm glad I made my wife smile. <laughs> she needed it. God will not ask you to do something. And then, that, and then you go at it alone. He tells you right there. This word says, do not be afraid or terrified because of them. And it says, for the Lord your God goes with you. Peter wasn't alone on the water. Jesus was there with him. And we have to understand that no matter what we're going to go through, no matter where the Lord has told us he needs us to go, or what the Lord has asked us to do, 
He's not going to let us go at it alone. We don't have to face it alone. He's going to be right there with us. But there's too many times that we get distracted by everything going on around us that we just we take our eyes on Christ. So we let, we let go of his hand. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not, do not be terrified or afraid because the Lord your God will never leave you nor forsake you and he goes with you. We, 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 we have to trust that See, this is the word of God. This is true. This is the truth. God isn't going to tell us something and then not do it. The Lord your God knows me. Too many of us are facing our situations by ourselves. Too many of us are trying to get through our circumstances by ourselves. We're not strong enough. We're not smart enough. We're not. If you try to go it alone, guess what? It's only going to get worse. I've learned that from experience. It's only going to get worse. The second emotion Peter felt. Then Peter went from feeling terrified. I said earlier he went from being terrified because he saw, is that a ghost on the water? That was Jesus. They were terrified. Then he went to feeling courageous. Lord, if it is you, he said, tell me to come out of the water. Jesus said, come. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. earlier when we get up off the altar we got that courageous pick up that courageous the Holy Spirit's in us and we can just we can we can we can accomplish it. Lord if it is you we all say you ask anybody who, who walked on water they're going to say Jesus walked on water they're never going to say Peter walked Right there is an example that Peter also was able to walk on water. There's nothing that we cannot accomplish. There's nothing that we can't do as long as we're seeking Christ and keeping our eyes focused on Christ. Listen, Peter walked on water because he had his eyes focused on Jesus. The same thing, the same thing goes for us. If we keep our eyes focused on Christ, there is nothing that we can't do. What I found interesting is that it said Peter walked on water, not Simon, but Peter is the name that Jesus gave. Him. Yes. How many times have we been in the presence of God at our home, in our prayer closet, at church, at the altar? And I said that we get up and want to go 12 rounds of the devil. But when he saw the wind, it only tells you he took his eyes off Jesus. And when he took his eyes off Jesus, fear said it. And instead of keeping his eyes fixed on Jesus, he became distracted by everything else around him. He went from being courageous, getting out of that boat, and saying, I'm going to walk on water because Jesus told me to walk on water. So he went from being courageous, guess what? He terrified again. He was terrified when he saw when they saw him walking on water. He was courageous when Jesus said, get out of the boat. Then the wind started kicking up, and guess what? He was terrified again. He, again, he went from here to here to here. How often do we feel that way? What in your life are you struggling with that is causing you to take your eyes off Jesus? Ask yourself that. Because earlier I asked, how many of us are feeling that we're home for something? I know I raised my hand. I know a couple people raised their head. What do you have your eyes fixed on? Do you have your eyes fixed on everything going on around you? Or do you have your eyes fixed on Christ? What is distracting you? What is causing you to be scared? What is causing doubt to creep in? 
What what is causing you to question your faith? What is what is what is what is causing all that? So we don't have to go. I mean, we're gonna go to. You. God never said that we weren't gonna go through this stuff. This is stuff that that we grow from. This this is why we go through. This is why we 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 go through these different kinds of emotions because this this is a tool that God uses to help us grow in these situations. You know, that we picked up for a reason, right? There's something that God is trying to tell you and God is trying to teach you through this storm or, or through this situation that you're going through. I said earlier, these are tests that God puts us through because he's either wanting us to take the next step in our walk and we're not doing it, or he's been telling us to do something and we're not being obedient and we're not doing it. Whatever it is, you don't have to let fear, doubt, uncertainty overwhelm you. We have too many Christians walking around overwhelmed. Too many of our brothers and sisters are walking around, like I said before, beat up, overwhelmed. We're not, we're, we're, we're created to walk around beat up and defeated. That's not why God created us. But yet, too many of us are, are walking around like that. I said earlier, Jesus is right here with us, right next to us. So whatever we're going through, he's going to go through it with us. Read this. Check this out. It says, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you die? The situation, the circumstance right now, if you were standing in front of God, or you were standing in front of Christ, and he was, would he say that same thing to you? Or you have a little faith, why did you die? See, sometimes we have to put ourselves in the story. You know, and, and, and I'm learning to do that as I, as, I, as I read my word more. You know, I, I put myself in the story and I picture myself like standing in front of Peter, like Peter standing in front of Christ. Is he going to tell me, you of little faith, whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, why did you doubt that I was going to get you through it? Like I said, I know fear and doubt can be overwhelming at times. And it can make us question our faith. But we all know that fear doesn't come from God. See, we walk around in all these things. And this is not what God gives us. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. He doesn't. In 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy verses 1, chapter 1, verse 7. And I, I went to the New Living Translation. I shared with brother earlier that, man, I like to go... I'm starting now to be able to jump back and forth to different, you know. Before I was just I was trying to learn the word and, and I was stuck to one book. But now I'm, I'm jumping to like the New Living and, uh, and you know, the NIV and, you know, the, I'm going to start going into that New King James. But we're getting to that. I'm going to start to understand that the words on that. <laughs> You're going to be surprised when I start talking to you like that in the street. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother, how about I'll do it today? <laughs> Where else are you going? <laughs> Where else are you going? You know, I'll talk to you like that. Then you know I'll read my new King James verse. 2 <laughs> Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7. And I said, but we all know that fear does not come from God. For God has not given us the spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. He hasn't. The devil tried to creep in and tried to make us be afraid. The devil tried to creep in and make us doubt. Remember the last message that I, served, I, I, I shared was, he's a liar, he's a deceiver. He creeps in, and, and that spirit of fear is, is when we start doubting or we stop 
believing or we stop having faith or we start questioning whether God is really going to answer our prayers or whatever, then we start doubting and through doubt creeps in fear. Because we think that God's not going to answer us or we think that God's not going to hear us. Or we, we, we. But God didn't give us a spirit of fear and timidity. That's how it does. A power of love and self-discipline. Are we self-disciplined? See, being self-disciplined is, 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 is training ourselves to, to understand and to live out what the Word of God says. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not. Trust me. But that's self-discipline. Hey, self-discipline, guess what is? Man, I'm feeling beat up. Am I my word? Man, it'll be up. Am I praying? Man, how's this going so wrong? Am I seeking God? Self-discipline. We, we need to train ourselves and be disciplined in the things of God, in the things of the kingdom. Because if we're not, guess what? We're in trouble. When we walk with God, it may not, when we walk with God, it may not make things easy, but it makes them awesome. Walking with Him gives us assurance of His presence and power in our lives. Our God is powerful, and with Him, all things are possible. We can endure trials and heartache because of Christ's resurrection power in us. We can overcome. And we don't realize the power that we can walk in and that the power that God gives us. Man. We only know it if we read it. And we, and we, and we through self-discipline and we learn the word that we understand. Man. Nothing is different from the people that God used in the Bible. Nothing's different. The same God they serve, the same Jesus they follow, is the same God we serve. And it's the same Jesus we follow. Yet, these stories, and, uh, the, 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 these uh, scriptures and these verses that we read, it, it, it just it allows us to see how God used these people in a mighty way. And guess what? God wants to do the same thing with all of us. Yeah, there's, there's healing power. Guess what? God wants to use us to heal people when we pray for them. You know, you see the prophets, they share the word of God. God wants to use us to deliver the message. He wants to do the same thing with us that he did with the people in the Bible. See, it's not until we understand we start walking in that power that God gives us. The power of the Holy Spirit. See, we, I think I shared with, when we accept Christ in our hearts, we're, we're gifted with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Right? So if I'm seeking, I'm asking God, Lord, give me Holy Spirit wisdom. Guess what? The wisdom that I'm I got is the same wisdom God has. I'm walking by the Spirit of God. He's in me. I'm walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. And until we actually understand that. That was just worded the, the way I tried to think. Oh, yeah, earlier he tried to tell me, oh, I like this verse. Go to the King. Is that the new King? Yes. King? Huh? I can do all things to Christ which strengthens me. Strengthen it. Strengthen it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm going to surprise you one day. I'm going to bring my new King James version. You guys are going to be like, whoa. Self-discipline. That's self-discipline. I'm going to make sure I self-discipline myself to get in that book. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That means, listen, he didn't say you can do some things. He says you can do all things. All things. Are we trusting God in all things? 
Are we having faith in God in all things? Are you trusting God in that storm? Is that something? I think it's time to start believing that scripture. Start believing what that scripture says. And I, I believe it's time that we start living it out in our lives. Because there's too many Christian brothers and sisters that they know what the scripture says, but they fail to live it out in their lives. Hey, I'll be guilty of that. I'll be guilty of that. You know, I, I read it, I understood it, but I failed to live it out in my life. It's time to start living it out in our lives. Yes, the storm will come, but Christ will give you strength through them. Yes, the wind will pick up, but Christ will give you strength to withstand them. And yes, you will feel like you're sinking and you're drowning at times, but Christ will be there to reach out his hand to save you. Just like, just like he did with Peter. Like I said, there's nothing different. There's going to be that moment where you're going to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you to save me. Guess what? He's going to reach out that hand and he's going to pick you up. But you have to make sure that you have your eyes fixed on Jesus. And not like anything else around you. The world is full of too many distractions. Too many distractions. There's just too much going on. The world is going too fast and wants to get from point A to point B. Just My wife always asks me, Man, like we go to Disneyland or we go anywhere. She's like, she, <laughs> like she's, she's walking quick, right? And I'm just back there cruising. And she's got to stop and she's got to look back. And to me, it's like, man, I'm going to miss that. I want to walk past something and miss something, you know? And she even tells me I drive like a grandpa sometimes. Like I go 25. It's like, man, I don't want to miss nothing. And I mess with her sometimes, like, she's so, I'm like, hey, did you see that unicorn on the corner of the street? She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> not focused, not paying attention to everything around me, you know? We've got to make sure we slow down and, and, and it's not try to move so Right now, we're all over this movement way too quick for us. You know, we at the tip of our fingers, man, we can see what's going on across the world. We've got to slow it down. And when they climb into the boat, the wind dies down. They climb into the boat, the wind dies down. The moment that he grabbed hold of Jesus' hand, they got back in the boat, and guess what? The wind went away. The storm disappeared. And the same thing goes for us. The minute we grab a hold of Jesus' hand, the wind dies down. Storm goes away. Amen. I'm going to close with this last scripture. Man, God is so good to us. Psalms 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and our strength. An ever present help in our trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, we will not fear. Though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surge. God is our refuge and our strength. And earlier I said, we are strong enough. We're not to, 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 to get through these trials, to get through these storms, to, to face these situations. We're not strong enough to do it on our own. But God is our refuge and our strength. We draw our strength from the Lord. If you're beat up, if you're crawling on your knees, you're not drawing your strength from the Lord. Therefore, we will not fear. We don't have to 
fear. We don't have to walk around like that. So as I close today, hey, Brother Nick, give me a favor. Can you get that phone for me? As I close today, I just pray that, that like I said earlier, and I asked earlier, how many of us are going through something? How many of us are dealing with something? Fix your eyes on Jesus. If you're not in your word, get in your word. If you're not in prayer, get in prayer. If you're not, if you're not seeking the faith of Christ, if you're not seeking Christ, seek Christ. Because guess what? He's in there to help you through it. No one else is going to be able to help you through the situation that you're going through. We're going to have an advice. It might not be good advice, but I think I trust the word of God more than I would trust the advice of somebody else. Right? Seek God. Stay focused. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ. And everything else around you just, it'll go away because Christ will make it go away. God bless everybody out there in Facebook world. Hope to see you again next week. And God bless those. And uh, we'll see.